हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल एम हर्षम अली खान सो फॉर टू वीडियोस आई हैव कंप्लीटेड ऑन दिस टॉपिक ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन प्रॉब्लम द फर्स्ट थ्योरी वीडियो आई हैव कंप्लीटेड द फर्स्ट थ्योरी वीडियो आई हैव कंप्लीटेड ऑन द मीनिंग ऑफ द टर्म ट्रांसपोर्टेशन प्रॉब्लम व्हाट इज ट्रांसपोर्टेशन मॉडल and what is the procedure of solving a transportation problem second video i have explained you what are the methods available for finding out initial basic feasible solution northwest corner rule least cost method and van vogel's approximation method so all this theory is very very important because in examination they may ask you a theory question apart from that this concepts will be used in the problems which i am going to start from the next video so watch all these theory videos twice thrice to get the complete clarity of the concepts right in this video i am going to explain you what are the methods available for finding out the optimum solution two stages are there the first stage you have to find out the ibfs initial basic feasible solution the second stage you have to find out the optimum solution the two methods are there which are applied for finding out the optimum solution that i am going to explain so before proceeding take the screenshot of the points which i have written on the board then i'll explain now our topic now is finding out the optimum solution now once the initial solution has been found the next step it to is to test the solution for optimality the first stage completed second stage how to find out the optimum solution the following two methods are widely used for finding out the optimum solution the first method is stepping stone method first step stepping stone method and the second step is uh, second uh, method is modified distribution method it is called modi method the two methods differ in the computational procedure but give exactly the same result and use the same testing procedure the final result whether you apply stepping stone method or you apply modi method final result will be same only computational procedure will be different in these two methods now the procedure being used is to test each unoccupied cell one at a time by computing cost change see here in the transportation table first we have applied if ibfs and given the allocations so some cells are occupied some cells are unoccupied now if you make occupied the unoccupied cell what is the change in cost suppose some uh, cells are completely blank unoccupied if you make them occupied what is the change in cost whether the cost will increase or cost will decrease or cost will remain same anything may happen so we have to try we have to see what is the change in cost if you convert the unoccupied cell into occupied cell if the inclusion of any unoccupied cell can uh, decrease the transport and transportation cost then this unoccupied cell will be considered for allocation we have to test if an unoccupied cell is made occupied then whether cost will increase or decrease if the cost is decreasing then we make that cell as occupied earlier it was unoccupied now we make it as occupied now we select that unoccupied cell for which the cost change is most negative the cost change is most negative that unoccupied cell will make it occupied the procedure is continued till the lowest possible transportation cost that is optimum solution is obtained we have to try we have to try every unoccupied cell and try to make it occupied and see what is the change in the cost if the cost is decreasing then we go on making unoccupied cell into occupied cell once we see that all the unoccupied cells we have checked now there is no possibility of reducing the cost then we got the optimum solution now stepping stone method the first method in examination many many times a theory question is also asked explain about stepping stone method or modi method 
तो स्टेपिंग स्टोन मेथड हाउ द ऑप्टिमम सोल्यूशन विल बी ऑप्टेंट इन दिस मेथड वी कैलकुलेट द नेट कॉस्ट चेंज दट कैन बी ऑप्टेंट बाई इंट्रोड्यूसिंग एनी ऑफ द अनऑक्युपाइड सेल्स इन टू द सोल्यूशन रिमेंबर इन स्टेपिंग स्टोन मेथड वन अनऑक्युपाइड सेल we try to occupy it if we try to occupy it by one unit in this unoccupied cell what is the cost change what is the cost change whether cost is increasing or decreasing after that another unoccupied cell another unoccupied cell we make it occupied by one unit then find out the change what is the change in cost whether cost is increasing or decreasing so in stepping stone method every unoccupied cell we try to make it occupied by one unit and find out the change the important rule to keep in mind that every increase in supply at one occupied cell must be associated by decrease in supply at another cell when we change when we change the allocations then what will happen if supply of one cell is increased the supply of another cell should decrease because we are changing the allocations we are changing the allocations if one supply is increasing definitely the other supply should decrease the same rule will apply for demand also if we increase one cell demand the other cell demand should decrease that opposite effect you have to remember in this stepping stone method thus there must be two changes in every row or column that is changed so whenever we are changing the allocations making unoccupied cell as occupied cell then definitely two effects must be there one cell the units will increase the other cell units must decrease with the same quantity whether it may be row or it may be column one change increasing the allocation and one change decreasing it this is easily done by evaluating reallocation in a closed path sequence with only right angle turns permitted so how to change the allocations we have to make a closed path a rectangle or square should be made that means turning should be at 90 degrees angle the turning may be the loop may be a what a rectangle loop or a square loop it should not be triangle right so 90 degrees angle should be made whenever we take the turn in the loop in that loop what we'll do one unit we we take positive another unit will take negative so four corners suppose four corners are coming so one corner positive one corner negative then positive negative in positive we add one unit in negative we subtract one unit then we find out what is the cost change the criteria for making reallocation is simply to know the desired effect upon cost why we change the criteria why we are changing the allocations we are changing the allocations to reduce the cost our ultimate objective is to reduce the cost the net cost change is determined by listing the unit cost associated with each cell and then summing summing over the closed part to find out the net effect for every change one cost is increasing the other cost is decreasing net effect we will find out what is the net net effect by changing the allocations in this loop signs are allocated alternate from positive to negative depending upon whether shipments are uh, being added or subtracted at a given point when we make the loop the point where we are starting the loop should be taken as positive then next turning will be negative next turning positive next turning negative in positive we add the units in negative we subtract the units in that closed path and find out what is the net effect net change a negative sign on the net cost change indicate that a cost reduction can be made by making the change the positive signs indicate the cost increase these are the points you have to remember regarding stepping stone method and by doing the problem on stepping stone the concept will be more clear inshallah from the next video onwards we'll start the problems the first method of finding out optimum solution i've explained that method is called stepping stone method the next method which is more important method 
And remember one point. For finding out optimum solution, if it is specifically asking you to apply stepping stone, then only you go for stepping stone. Otherwise, always we go for MODI method, modified distribution method. Because this method is superior and less time consuming than stepping stone. Stepping stone is more time consuming because every unoccupied cell we have to make a loop and check. Suppose in the table nearly 8 unoccupied cells are there. So 8 times you have to make the loop. 8 times you have to evaluate whether there is a cost increase or decrease. 8 times if 8 unoccupied cells are there. So it's a very time consuming process. But in Modi method that process that problem is overcome. That means less time we can find out the optimum solution. So here modified duration method Modi. The modified distribution method has a pattern similar to that of stepping stone method except that it evaluates each of the unoccupied cell in the process more efficiently. See here. In this Modi method also we evaluate the un we evaluate this uh, unoccupied opportunity cost for unoccupied cell. So instead of making a loop in each unoccupied cell what we will do is we will calculate the opportunity cost for all the unoccupied cells. After calculating opportunity cost for all unoccupied cells we will see if there is any negative opportunity cost then there is a possibility of further improvement. If all the opportunity costs are positive there is no possibility of any improvement no possibility of any cost reduction we reached the optimum solution so only once we calculate all the opportunity costs we we'll get the solution instead of making again and again loops only one time loop will make so in stepping stone method a closed path is traced for each of the unoccupied cell that is the difference the difference between stepping stone and mode is in stepping stone, we make closed path for every unoccupied cell. But here, we don't make closed path for unoccupied cells. In the modified duration method, the opportunity cost of all unoccupied cells are calculated without having to trace the respective closed path. Not necessary to make the closed path. Calculate all the opportunity cost. Then, in fact, we need to trace only one closed path in Modi method after unoccupied cells with most negative value have been identified. <coughs> After calculating all opportunity cost, if all opportunity costs are positive, we reach the optimum solution. No further iterations, no further calculations. But if negative opportunity com uh, comes, negative opportunity cost comes, we have to see what is the most negative opportunity cost. From that most negative opportunity cost, we will make a closed loop to change the allocations. Thus, it can provide considerable time saving over the stepping stone method for solving TP. So, comparatively, Modi, uh, Modi method is much time saving method because we are making a loop only once after calculating opportunity cost. That's it. So, two methods I have explained that is stepping stone and Modi. These methods practically after doing two, three problems, the concept will be very much clear in your mind. Now, balanced and unbalanced transportation problem. The transportation problems can be classified into two categories, balanced and unbalanced. Balanced transportation problem means where the total of demand and total of supply both are equal. That means the total of the supply origins and the total of the demand destinations are equal. Row totals, common totals are equal then it is called balanced transportation problem. But many a times the row total and column total may not be equal. Example the supply, the supply total is 1000 whereas demand requirement is 1200. In that case supply and demand are not equal it is called unbalanced problem. So whenever problem is unbalanced, when unbalanced total demand and supply are not equal. In that case we have to make it balanced and then we proceed to find out the solution. How to balance it? We have to open a dummy row or dummy column. Dummy row or dummy column. Example, the supply is less. 
demand is more supply is less so we open a dummy row to make it equal supply similarly sometimes supply is more but the demand is less so we open a dummy column so a dummy row or dummy column will be opened to make the problem balanced one next one last two topic in this video is degeneracy in transportation problem so in examination theory question is asked what is degeneracy in tp before applying the test of optimality it is necessary to ascertain that the solution is non degenerate or feasible that means after completing ibfs we should not proceed to find out the optimum solution after finding out initial solution we have to check whether it is non degenerate or not what is this non degenerate if the solution is degenerate then test of, test of optimality cannot be applied that means a red light will blink that we cannot proceed ahead we have to overcome the degeneracy if degeneracy problem is there we cannot proceed so we have to overcome so what is this degeneracy an initial solution of m by n tp is said to be non degenerate if it has has the following properties m by n means m rows and n columns suppose five rows and four columns so 5 by 4 5 into 4 five fours are 20 right 20 cells will be there now what are the properties the initial solution must contain exactly m plus n minus 1 allocations the problem is non degenerate if the number of allocations are m plus n minus 1 n number of rows n number of columns suppose if five rows and four columns to so five plus four nine minus one eight so if eight allocations are there then the problem is non degenerate we can proceed it is correct one suppose if the number of allocations are not equal to m plus n minus one the problem is called degeneracy problem suppose five rows and four columns five rows and four columns 5 plus 4 minus 1 8 suppose if the number of allocations are only 7 in that case the problem is called degeneracy problem we cannot proceed we have to make it non degenerate secondly the allocation must be independent positions a set of allocation is said to be independent if it has does not form any closed loop through these allocations when you make the allocation c that all the allocations are independent independent means there should not be any closed path among the allocations the allocations should not make a closed path either in the form of square or in the form of rectangle closed path should not be formed then we can say allocations are independent so if these two conditions are satisfied the problem is called non degenerate we can proceed first the number of allocations must be equal to m plus n minus 1 secondly all the allocations must be independent then we can say the problem is non degenerate and we can proceed if the problem is degeneracy problem we have to resolve the degeneracy how to resolve apply an allocation with a small quantity epsilon it is called epsilon and apply the epsilon in any one of the unoccupied cell apply the epsilon in any of the unoccupied cell then the number of cells will be equal to m plus n minus 1 in this way we can overcome resolve the degeneracy so we have completed the theoretical part of this topic transportation problems inshallah from the next video onwards we'll start the problems on transportation problems so if you are satisfied give a like to the video share my channel subscribe if you are not yet subscribed and by the super thanks which is given below my video Inshallah, we'll start the problem from the next week.